What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 38 of the charge to the top here with Hereford FC and today I've got up for you guys a live commentary against Peterborough who are currently top of the league. If you missed last episode go check it out, it was against uh, Scunthorpe, it was a good little game for us. Since then just the four matches, three in the league, one in the EFL Cup of course that 6-2 win. A great start to the year. Scunthorpe really have struggled so far as well. I think they have one point in four games. So perhaps we can't read as much into that result as perhaps uh, I, I originally thought. Because they were a favourite at the start of the season. Anyway, you can see this first game of this run of results. A 5-1 defeat against Burton. Uh, in truth, the EFL Cup don't really care about it. The board don't care about it. It was the second game of the season. I didn't want to play players who played at the weekend. So I just completely rotated the side to play a team in the league above us. We got slaughtered, not entirely surprising, but some young players at least got some game time. Since then, focus on the league, and um, I guess this is where I really kind of care. Uh, you know, I, I want to do well in the league this year. You know, winning the, the EFL Cup, not going to happen, so really, league has to be our focus. And as you can see, our second game of the season was against Exeter. Not the greatest of results. I mean, 1-1 it finished, we dominated the game. If we look at the match stats, you can see we were way on top in this game. Two clear-cut chances, four half chances. It finished 1-1 in the end. Musino picked up an injury, and it was a bad injury. He's damaged his cruciate ligaments. It's going to be out for eight to ten months. He was a massive player for us last year, John, but I'm very much concerned that that is the end of his career now um, in terms of here at Hereford. I mean, a 9-11 to 11 month injury for a young player can be detrimental. For a player who's 34, was losing a bit of his pace anyway, I think it's a career ender, unfortunately. Uh, I'm lucky in the sense that he only has one year left on his deal, so we can kind of see how things play out. But yeah, eight months out of this injury, it's a bad one. Uh, he's on a lot of money as well, but we'll just have to kind of deal with that. But yeah, that kind of it left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth, I guess you could say. Anyway, the next game we had against Stevenage, a very good side, but we won this one 2-1. Rafael Branco coming in at centre mid for Messino, kind of to fill that void, and he got a man of the match performance, and he got a goal as well, which ensured the win for us here. Stevenage played fairly well. We actually had the better of the chances, and we took them, so a good win there. And we followed that up with a first home league win of the season in our second home game. It was here against Newport County. You can see 2-0 at finish. James Madison with a third-minute goal. Shimanga with a 44th-minute goal. It was all wrapped up before half-time. A very, very good result there. Worth noting that uh, Harry Lennon picked up an injury following this game. He's out for four to six weeks with an abdominal strain. So that's another big injury for us. And there's actually another injury as well because Harry Anderson, the winger, 23 years old, out with a thigh strain. So... Last year, we really didn't have that many injuries, but with Harry Lennon, who's certainly one of our big key players at centre-back out for six weeks, and Harry Anderson out for, obviously, three weeks, and then, obviously, throw that in with Messino, it's not looking good on the injury front early on. In terms of our team, it kind of adapts fairly well. You know, Rafael Branco fills that hole, obviously, at centre-back for us where Lennon's injured. At right mid, we do have James Winters on loan from Chelsea, who can play there in place of Harry Anderson. And, uh, well, in the centre mid position, it's looking increasingly like Ollie Banks here is possibly going to be our Musino replacement. The midfield position as a whole, not really an area I've given that much TLC to, particularly the centre mid positions in recent years. I am looking at players, and there's plenty of good players out there. If we just look at kind of realistic transfers, you can see that there's some options here when it comes to centre mids. I just don't know how good they are. And Alex McDonald's a new addition. He's not he's not that great, though. But, um, no, I am keeping an eye, obviously, on the players who become realistic for us. But um, there's some okay players here, but they're just they're not good enough. Jake here, I almost signed him, but £800 a week, it's a lot of money. I don't know how much of an improvement he is on Ollie Banks. I mean, yes, he's an improvement. But, I mean, there probably is a significant difference, really. But at the same time... I don't feel like he's a long-term solution. I don't want to bring in a player promising him first-team football if he's just going to be ousted out of the team, you know, in January or, you know, at the end of the season, really. So I am keeping an eye out on kind of options to bring in players to Shreven upside, particularly with the Messino injury, because obviously that is a long-term one where we may as well not have him. I am looking, you can see here, at contracts that are expired. There are lots of players here who I have kind of earmarked as potentially being realistic once they... Um, 
once their demands lower. Players like Petrasso here, the Canadian, very good player. Familiar, of course, if you watch the Lewis save. Jake Heskiff as well, another player who we had in the Lewis save back actually, I think, in that series. We had him in League Two and the Vanarama North South. Currently kind of sees us as not an attractive prospect. But I'm hoping over the you know the next few months a few of these players they are going to be more interested in us. And actually, one thing that I'll talk about this is something that stuck out to me. So Egerton here are a team in the Northwest Counties League First Division. Okay, fairly standard. They're, they're, you can see here, they're in the 10th tier. They've got an insane squad of players not on actual contracts. You look here, none of their players are on full-time contracts. They're all on kind of pay-as-you-go. But for whatever reason, they are able to attract just the craziest players who are just old or just released. You've got players like Jordan Bataka, Ross McCormack, um, Jake Buxton released, obviously, from Derby County. There's some really good players here that they have, and I don't understand how they can get them. So if you if you know, please let me know. But I can't actually sign players from them, despite the fact that they actually play in the 10th tier. But yeah, they, they have a very, very good side, and they've got multiple promotions back-to-back, -back, and I've kind of looked... Through their, their kind of history, I don't think they've like been taken over uh, by a tycoon. No, they've only got the consortium here. I don't I don't understand. So if anyone knows, please explain to me what is happening here. And as I said, I can't even sign the players that they've gone in for, players like Ross McCormack, but he's happy to play for Egerton. So there's a mystery for you. If anyone knows the answer, let me know. I've never seen anything like it in FM. And, uh, yeah, it's a big mystery for me. But anyway, that's a little bit about kind of the players I'm looking at. There's loads here. These are all players whose contracts expired in the summer who I scouted uh, back then. And their wages are at most £2,500 a week. So, you know, hopefully a few of these players decide eh, maybe they're interested in joining us. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, players like Basal uh, um, Sambu here, like, he'd be a great little addition, but... You know, we can't quite sign him yet. I'm hoping, obviously, over the next few months, players' demands start to drop a little bit. But obviously, there's not been that many games since the last episode. The reason I'm bringing you the Peterborough game is because they are the top dog at the moment. It'll be a good way to gorge and kind of gauge, I guess, how well we're doing this year. You can see they're top of the league. They've conceded one goal in four games. Um, they've won four on the bounce. We're in third at the moment, which is nothing to be scoffed at. Just Blackpool and Peterborough ahead of us. And a win here would see us leapfrog them. So it's a fairly big game. I know it's early on in the season, but at the same time, um, obviously that Scunthorpe result last time out was fantastic. But given how Scunthorpe performed, is that really a good way to gauge how well we're getting on? Probably not. So anyway, this is the team we're going to go with. It's the 4-2-3-1. It's got Griffiths. Owens, Branko, Mizag, and Wiseman at the back. Of course, Branko coming in for Harry Lennon. Nothing too crazy going on there. Christy Davis plays alongside Ollie Banks. And at left mid, we have Ricky Holmes. We have Winters out on the right. Madison down the centre. And Shimanga, who is the second top goal scorer in the league so far this season with four goals, uh, he is going to be leading the line for us. So hopefully he can have a good performance today. But yeah, we'll see how we get on. Big game for us, taking on Peterborough away from home. It's not going to be easy. Um, but hopefully the players can just give a really impressive performance here. Of course, last time out, last live com, great start to the season. Looking for more of the same today here against Peterborough. We'll see how we get on. So yeah, Peterborough going strong. They weren't actually relegated this season, which is kind of curious. They missed out on promotion last year uh, from League 2, but they have a very good squad. And well, Madison has just scored again for us. What a player. I talked about him last episode, James Madison. He was a player who, very talented young player at Norwich City. He was actually released a year ago. And for the 2019-20 season, no one signed him. I don't know if his wage demands were too high. If the, I, I don't know why anyone didn't sign him. It doesn't make any sense to me. But we brought him in, obviously, £1.6,000 a week. Three-year deal for the League One quality player. And he's been a very, very good player for us so far. And, well, we have another chance here. For some reason, it's playing back really laggily. What could be causing the lag? Let me see. Let's, let's close some stuff I have in the background. This is very professional of me, sitting there closing programmes whilst I'm still playing uh, FM. Right, there we go. Is it smoother? Not really. That's weird. I wonder what's causing that. I'll have to look into it. Hopefully it's not too distracting. I could go on text only, but I feel like that would just be even worse for you all. So we'll, we'll deal with it. Hopefully the 3D isn't too laggy. And hopefully Peterborough don't score anymore because they've just replied immediately. Matty Taylor with it. 12 minutes gone. Ball into the box. And it was uh, Jordan Clark. I've just added a first name to it. It's Jordan now. You're Jordan Clark. I don't know where Jordan's come from. What is his first name? If it's Jordan... 
I don't. It's not going to be Jordan, is it? I've just named one of the Peter players, Jordan Clark. It's Josh. I mean, it's pretty close. Jay Clark. I, I, I'm taking it. That's good enough for me. Anyway, let's go back to the match. Let's not go to your laptop home screen, Jack, on the sideline. Let's get back into the game. Either way, they've scored. They've replied. But we're going to try and bounce back immediately. Set piece in. Owen's back post. Not great in the air, but wins it. Shamanga. I think that's an own goal off the defender. It's not been given us an own goal. We'll take it. It's his fifth goal of the season. It's his fifth goal in five games. And we're top of the league. We're having a laugh. Ball whipped in. Owens nods it down. Novak clears it away. Owens back into the mixer. Shimanga smashes it at the man on the post. Can't deal with it. And it's in the back of the net. And, well, the away fans behind the goal there, they are loving it here. 2-1 up against Peterborough. A massive, massive side Peterborough. Particularly uh, kind of when you kind of look at, I guess, League 1 and League 2 sides in England. They'd be a team you'd kind of pick out. It's been a fairly large side. They've had spells in the championship in the not-so-distant past. Consistently a very big team in the division. Struggled a little bit as of late. But, well, to be 2-1 up against them here, very, very happy with that. And uh, hopefully we can just continue this going. Although there's going to be another chance here, of course. Harry Lennon at centre-back for us not being in the squad. A bit of a miss. Branco, the left centre-back, questions to be asked perhaps, of course. Formerly played for Leighton Orient in League 2. They didn't really play him that much. So the number 12, he's got a point to prove back in the division. And, well, he's been involved in the early build-up play here as we are coming forward with the ball. But Holmes... Looking inside, perhaps. Shimanga makes a run. Madison picks it up. On the overlap is Winters. Madison goes for it from range. It would have been an incredible goal. He scored a set piece from a not too dissimilar range earlier on. Um, but, well, we've got another set piece to deal with here. And, well, Christy Davis, you naughty, naughty boy. He's given away a penalty. We've not had a sending off this season, which is a plus. Unfortunately for us, right before half time, if Christy Davis has decided he doesn't like defending corners. He's just going to push people over. And, uh, well, Peterborough will have a chance to get back into this game. Novak to take it. Can Griffiths come up big? He can't. He is sent the wrong way. He's given the eyes by Lee Novak up top for Peterborough. And, uh, well, it's back to being all square. Of course, Peterborough, they've only conceded one goal in their first four games. So to score two against them already, a good little achievement. Unfortunately for us, defensively, we've not been superb this year. I think we have one clean sheet so far this season in the league in five games. Could be a little bit better. But at the same time, 2-2 at half time. Not a bad performance. Good to see our attacking intent shining through. Um, perhaps a little bit of a shame that they did get that equaliser from a penalty right before half-time. But we're going to try and kick onwards and upwards and see how we get on here. Let's see if we can kind of bounce back and give a good second half account of ourselves here. It's a big half of football already. I know it's early on in the season, but given where we are at the moment in the league and given how we've performed in this game, you'd have to say that... We've probably got to be looking at promotion as a realistic option here. And, well, with Peterborough, the favourites to win the entire league and being away from home against them, this is a game I want to try and win. Of course, we have led this game twice. Actually, is that right? Did we did we score the second? I can't remember. We did. We did. We have led this game twice. I'm doubting myself here. So, hopefully, we can, obviously, step up to the plate and give a better performance here. Shimanga, massive ball through to him. He becomes out. Winters has got to score that. It's... A lack of composure by the youngster out wide. The keeper comes to it, kind of half clears it. It falls to the path of Winters. The goal is open. It was a narrow angle. There were quite a few men that he had to dink the ball over. But at the same time, he would have tipped him to do a little bit better than he ended up doing. I am going to take him off, and we are going to bring in Keenan Bennett out on the right-hand side. A throwback there. He is back in the team. And uh, the other player I'm going to take off, Christy Davis. I'm actually going to bring on James Murphy, the youngster. A very good playmaker, James Murphy. Of course, American. We signed him as a free agent. He was released by Sheffield Wednesday. And, well, he's going to have a chance to try and prove himself here. I guess the blessing is with the Musino injury, it actually forces me to play my younger players in the centre midfield position, which I guess is better for us long term. At the same time, I kind of miss Musino in this kind of game particularly. But either way, second half, not really lived up to the billing of the first half. We've got a long throw to deal with here, and we will deal with it. Griffiths collects it. 2-2 two -two would not be a bad result at all. Peterborough... As you've already kind of identified, they are top of the league. They are one of the few teams to have a perfect record going into this game. Maybe we can make something happen late on. It seems increasingly unlikely as we do just give away the ball. And unfortunately for us, here at London Road, it's going to finish 2-2. Not a bad performance. James Madison did pick up the Man of the Match award. Obviously, he would have been keen to impress playing for Norwich, of course. A little bit of a rival to Peterborough. And, um, well, that was a good performance. I'm pretty happy with that. You know, away from home, playing a team who hadn't slipped up all season. Worth noting that both uh, Blackpool and, obviously, Peterborough, who we played today, both drew. So no team has a 100% record anymore. 
You can see for us, we have the most goals in the league. We also have one of the worst defences in the kind of top five or six. But still, it's a not a bad performance. 2-2. Shame about, the I guess, the nature of the second goal we conceded coming from a penalty. Uh, you can see the transfer window does close on the 31st of this month. Of course, free transfers can still happen in that time. Do I think we're going to be doing any crazy late kind of doors business? I might try and do a little bit. might see who we can kind of find out about and maybe bring in. But at the same time, I'm relatively happy with the squad at the moment. Despite our injuries, obviously, Harry Lennon and Harry Anderson and we see now three massive, massive first-team players for us. At the start of the season, you probably would have put them all in the starting eleven, And so to be missing all three of them and to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Peterborough, a team who are fantastic defensively, you know, they are one of the big favourites. And with our expectation to avoid relegation, I really can't fault the boys. You can see we are still only 19th favourite to win the league, so it's still apparently just a flash in the pan. Uh, I've noticed that Scunthorpe and Plymouth have been interchanging a little bit when it comes to the odds. I assume Scunthorpe won. Uh, they did. They won their first game of the season 1-0 against Crawley today. So that kind of makes sense for their title aspirations. Although they've got a lot of ground to now make up if they want to be up there in the automatic promotion spots. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up today's episode from me. Slightly shorter one, but a few things to cover, obviously. That game against Peterborough, a fairly big one. In terms of when we'll be back, Blackpool is a game in the not-too-distant future. They are going very strong, as is Chesterfield. Two teams who, they are right up there in the league. Given how early it is in the season, I'm not going to live come either of those games. Instead, I'm thinking we may do the Oldham game. They're currently in sixth. That'll be in just over a month's time, so that seems like a good little game to do. So hopefully I'll see you guys for that one. As always, if you have enjoyed, leave a like. If you've got any comments, leave them down below. And other than that, thank you so much for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.